Hello, and welcome back to Narrow Space. My channel, we explore the planetary system, build recreation craft, and perform various missions in Kerbal Space Program 2. Also, the first game if I receive more requests. Subscribe if you enjoy this style of content. I try to post a video every week. Today's mission was a lot of fun. We'll be exploring Kerbin's North Pole using an F-16 that I quickly threw together. I find missions like this to be really enjoyable and practical to achieve while the game has few features and many bugs. Currently, this is patch 2, version 0.1.2.0, and it was We'll talk more about the craft momentarily, but uh, you may be wondering how we got all the way out here, since we are a long way from the Kerbal Space Center at the equator. Instead of patiently flying this thing all the way out here, of course we took the Kerbal approach. Well, that was fun, and definitely a unnecessarily overpowered rocket because this is the Kerbal way. As for our landing spot, we chose to go right where the land changes from green to snowy, just because I was curious how this transition area would look. And it definitely looks nice. Also, coming up on our right here, I found this nice little beach that I figured would be the perfect spot to land before we performed our polar inspection. If you recall from the first game, the polar region was an empty, flat, desolate wasteland, and the Kerbal Space Program 2, this could not be farther from the case. First of all, this region is no longer flat. As you'll see soon, uh, the steep, towering glacial cliffs here first caught my eye, and I wouldn't be surprised if it was the same for you. These cliffs are absolutely beautiful. They are quite tall. So, we've got our gear down. We've bled enough speed. Uh, we're just coming around for a final landing approach. Thankfully, the rocks don't yet have collision right now, or uh, we'd be dead. I'm also impressed with the ground details through these nice little arctic plants that really add to the detail. It's almost a nice landing. I know we kind of rolled to our side there, but you might notice this uh, beach isn't as flat as I thought from the sky. But now that we're much closer to the North Pole, we've got plenty of fuel in our tanks, we're ready to explore and see what we find also enjoy flying the craft that we brought with us. With this F-16 replica, I wasn't going one for one or anything, mainly just a quick recreation of a craft that I knew would be fast and maneuverable, which it was. As you can see in the footage, this craft handled really well, minus some of the control surfaces occasionally flapping, which I believe is a known bug and hopefully gets fixed in the upcoming patch. Let me know if a proper F-16 recreation or tutorial is something you'd like to see from me in the comment section. We also chose that initial landing spot because I was drawn to the polar coast for some reason. And I was not disappointed. I already mentioned the steep glacial cliffs, but also the mountains and the variety of terrain is a stark and welcome difference compared to the first game. This was actually my first time seeing Kerbin's North Pole up close in KSP2. All I heard is that it wasn't just flat, icy plains anymore, uh, but I was not expecting this level of detail. I definitely look forward to building a polar base or a mission to the South Pole in the future. I noticed this uh, small little flat patch of land hidden against the otherwise mountainous terrain. I figured this would be a rare chance to perform a landing to get a closer look at the surface. There's some of that flapping I was talking about. And again, that was almost a good landing. This area also appeared uh, to be flatter from the skies. Even the smallest bump in the ground wants to roll a craft. So, I'll take what I can give you. Who knew off-roading a fighter jet on ice wouldn't be easy? 
Still no sign of any polar bears or Santa Claus or even Indian elves, so let's get back up in the air. I think this craft looks really lovely against the icy backdrop. I thought some of these shops were absolutely breathtaking. Compared to the first game, even with all the visual mods, KSP2 wins here in my opinion. As my fuel resources dwindled, I found myself wishing I had more and more to fly further, continue exploring. I know there's the infinite fuel setting, but I didn't feel like it was any. Anyway, this experience of exploration was new for me in KSP2. In the first game, in my opinion, the landscapes were much less interesting compared to now. I find myself constantly wondering what landform I'll see next beyond the horizon. So, I really appreciate the hard work uh, by the developers in this department, and with the new and improved landscapes, as well as the overall visuals that Kerbal Space Program 2 offers. Well, that's enough romanticizing. Don't get me wrong, it's still a very early access game, uh, it still has as many flaws and bugs, although this is one of the few missions that I've been able to uh, do in its entirety without experiencing any bugs, so that's a really good sign for how early access is going, uh, all the effort put into the patches by developers. There is a true beauty unique to this game that I believe will only improve as we approach the 1.0 release. This nuisance of exploration, coupled by the beauty that Kerbal Space Program 2 offers, have been my favorite features so far. That's what I wanted to highlight for you all today and share with you in this video. Thankfully our final landing here did not result in a rapid unscheduled disassembly. I'm narrating this about 8 days after Starship's RUD, which was the most exciting thing I've seen in a while. Starship's full stack tumbling before exploding was the most Kerbal thing I've ever seen in real life. Anyway, back to Kirby. Looks like we're pretty much out of fuel. The sun is setting. We've touched down for the final time. I guess this is the end of the night. Please let me know if you enjoyed this video and any ideas for future videos in the comments. If people continue to respond positively to my commentary, I swear I'll purchase a proper microphone and uh, the audio quality will improve. Thank you so much for watching this video and please have a great rest of your day.